if you were one of the people saying Ryu was a good person, Ryu was good, and Ryu was gonna help Sanji escape, congratulations, you called it. This was an amazing chapter of One Piece. Welcome to my review of One Piece cha manga chapter 841. Now, there is a lot to talk about this week. Kind of. There's a lot of key things to talk about, but they all really go together. So, why don't we simply start off with talking about Ryu and the fact that Sanji's sibling don't have the capacity to experience empathy or sympathy. So, uh, we see Sanji in, his, in the dungeon tied up with an iron mask on. He's not being mistreated. He's still being given food and they even let him take the mask off to eat. But I'm kind of the problem with it. The guards bringing him food know who he is. So are these just like special guards that are sworn to secrecy? Like did you, will just guarantee to, to never mention Sanji being there to anyone? Like not even his siblings knew it. That's the worst part about it. Now his sibling didn't know in the last chapter. His sibling, Riju, would be the only one. And she, Riju, hit, hit it. I, I would assume she was upset. Now everybody else was kind of like, whatever. No, but so, when Riju comes to visit, and Riju, before Riju comes to visit, visit him, his three brothers come up. And they start beating Sanji up. And they start beating on him. And then that's when your father comes in and start praising them. You're also... There's this one battle where he hugs all of his four children besides Sanji. And like, I love you all so much. And I'm like, you are a piece of literal scum. You are, a, you are a piece of shit. You really are. Like, it was unbelievable to me. I mean, he, it's like, you guys are strong, therefore I love you. Sanji weak, so I hate him. That was just great stuff. And there's a great name after where Riju is passing up Sanji, and she pretty much said, Well, like in you, I'm different. The difference between Sanji and Riju, though, is that while Riju still gained the physical strength, because he was able to, like, rip the bars apart, is it just like a 12, maybe a 12-year-old girl? She ripped iron metal bars apart pretty easily. I mean, Riju is incredibly powerful. And that, and that really where it goes into like how strong it reads you. I think he's really strong. I think he may be the second strongest person. But that depends on whether or not Oda wants to make a girl the second strongest person in the arc. I don't know if Oda would do that, but that's besides the point. But Reju is definitely, clearly very strong. And she said this line where she said, But I'm different from them, even though I have all the power. I can feel sympathy and empathy. My, your bro, our brothers don't feel sympathy they, or empathy. They don't feel bad for people. Like they don't feel bad in the slightest if they find out Sanji died. They don't care. And it, it, it doesn't. It's not that. And it's not even that they're evil. Is that it doesn't register in their head. They literally it, the idea that their brother being beaten by their own father. Doesn't register as bad. It registered it. Not even. It doesn't even register as funny. It, it registered as normal to them, which is just. That's what some of them find it funny, but it's like they don't have the capacity to understand why that's wrong. They literally can't, which I like. They I mean, really kind of like okay, they're villains. They're gonna stay villains. So there's this thing where Sanji in flashback goes to see his mom. When he see Sanji's mom, he cooks food for her, but he cooks. He cooks food for her, and he spills it. He well, you know, it's not the food that he gives get to his mom. But still, he spills food at some point, and he's like, "Why would you ever eat moldy food off of the floor?" I love it. What Sanji is saying here is that he his whole thing about never wasting food. He used to like to cook, but the whole never under any circumstance, even if it's on the floor and it's dirty and it's gonna make you vomit. That whole thing came from death. From being stranded on the island. That whole thing happens later. Right now, he still has that very royal. He, Nandi is different. He's much kinder. He's much more, like, on the same standard as a lower class citizen. But he does. He is a royal. There are certain ideas in his head that he aren't gone. 
So yeah, that was a little great little scene. But he goes there, he makes his mom the food, and he, he goes out, but you know, I guess his mother is really far from the house. She's like not living with them. I think she's sick. It implies she's like sick. What I understand, but she goes to see her. And he falls, the food falls in the mud, it gets like dirty. This, I love Nanji's mother. Minute one, I was like, all of Nanji's fears, literally, it's weird. All of the, I think Oda is really trying to hammer in the reason Nanji doesn't hit women. It's because all the, the women in his life were the only people that were semi decent people. And Raju is still kind of. I mean, I'll go into Raju later. And so, like, what I, how I feel about the way she's handling this. But he goes to see his mother, and he men and he, you know, one of the people there is like, you know, we have all this prepared for her, and whatever, and she's like, no, no, bring me Sanji food. And he's like, it got in the mud, and it's all dirty, and no, you wouldn't want to eat it, it probably tastes like shit. And then it's like, and she literally, she stabs the food, puts it in her mouth, and she's like, it tastes delicious. Like, it's amazing. She's like, this is the best food I've ever had. And she even said, she even said, for now on, I don't want you, I would be happy if, if Sanji could prepare my meal for me instead of you. Like, she's literally, she's asking for Sanji to do the cooking. And I don't, we don't even know if the cooking was good. We don't. But no, that was one scene. There was just, this chapter was so good. And we used to see the grave, and, and I thought it very heavily. It pretty much concerned at the point Sanji's mom is dead, unfortunately. But, uh, no, but some people are saying she's alive, but I don't know. I don't really know. Uh, like, you see a grave. There is a panel of the grave in there, but it's just a grave. It could mean anything. It could be standing for something completely different. But, let's talk about Ryu and her handling of the situation later on. But, so what happens is we go out of a flashback, and we see Ryu pretty much telling Sanji that they're heading to this thing called the Red Line. And she can and he'll and he'll have, and she's going to and she going to bust him out and she wants him to escape to the East Blue. And it's just, it's just an amazing scene. It really the whole escape plot is just amazing. It's great. Sanji and Judge bump into each other. And this is where you realize how messed up of a person Judge is. Judge how how much of a piece of shit he is. To be honest, because what he said to Sanji. Sanji starts going on how he get a fight judge, how he's going to lead no matter what. And judge, he's like, I'm going to lead your judge looks at his own gun and says, Oh, oh no, no, no. Go right ahead. You leave. Just you just never call yourself Sanji you didn't smoke again. Like you like literally you are worth you are worth as much as a piece of shit to me. I don't care about you. I don't care. Like you like I honestly only didn't kill you. Pretty much because it, I would feel guilty. Judge does openly admit that he can't bring himself to kill Sanji. So he's like, and he can't bring himself to kick him out. It's like, deep down, Judge is still Sanji's father. But Mizai, so he, there, are two, there are two things he won't do. He won't kick Sanji out, and he won't kill Sanji. He'll treat Sanji like shit. He'll put, metal, he'll put iron boxes and iron masks on him. He'll put him in a dungeon. He'll starve him. But he won't kill him or kick him out. He was a good dad, right? Dad of the year. Judge for dad of the year. <laughs> like, I'm, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but, the judge kick. the judge is pretty much tells Sanji, and you can even have the key to the Iron Mac while you're at it. Just leave. But never call yourself Sanji, then smoke again. And Sanji is like, okay. So Sanji leaves. But as he's running, there's... The thing with Ryu that I mentioned in my live reaction that I didn't really like. So Ryu tells Sanji, "You can never, you can never come back to us. Do you hear me? One day you'll definitely, you're definitely gonna meet people who will treat you the way you deserve to be treated." And she's crying. She, she, Ryu is sobbing, and then Sanji runs away from her. And then Sanji wakes up. Now let me talk about my thoughts on that line. I know I was quiet there, I had to go read the manga train translation quickly because I had actually forgotten it would be a Dapper Line one. But I don't like that translation. I I'm not even I don't like that that word. Maybe it's different in the essential translation, 
but it's too similar to what Robin Saul said to Robin. Like, it, it really, it, it's, a, it's a great scene. It just kind of bothered me. I was like, this is literally the same thing Saul said to Robin. It really, it's like, you know, Sunday you'll find friends who will never leave you. Sunday you'll find people who will treat you the way you deserve to be treated. They're very similar. And it brings back that pre-time kit, post-time kit parallel. And you're kind of like, yeah, is that really... By the way, we're in Easter. But, you know, is that really... Is that really worth it? Like, it's kind of annoying, kind of pissed me off. Kind of ruined the moment for me. Because instead of thinking how impactful, how impactful it was, I thought of Robin's backstory. <laughs> no, but that's besides the point. That's just a minor gripe I have with it. Um, yeah, the rest, that's pretty much all that happened. We do get Sandy waking up, and then we, uh, transition to a big part of the chapter. The final page. We are, we are revealed that Luffy and Cracker have been fighting for 11 hours. Okay, so apparently what is happening is that Luffy is doing a process that uh, Cracker is referring to as fight, run, eat, repeat. For the past 11 hours, Luffy has been fighting Cracker, running away, eating the biscuit, eating Cracker's biscuit, and then leaving again. It's also implied Nami been helping him, but what I really like about this is how Cracker says he can make an infinite number of, um, biscuit warriors. Luffy says it requires stamina to create the biscuit warrior, which I liked. And then Luffy goes on to talk about how Holden eat everything. And he's like, I can keep on eating forever. Like I can I, I can eat a ridiculous amount of food. Bring it on. I'll eat whenever you can dish out. And it is an amazing little scene. It's actually the biggest we've ever seen Luffy inflated. He's like two times the size of Cracker. It's just, it's really it's an unbelievable scene. And it, it really makes you wonder though Again, Luffy had problems against Gear against Doflamingo with Gear Four. What I'm going to assume happened is that he fought with Cracker with Gear Four for like whatever period it will last. It ran out, and then Nami, by some miracle, managed to hold off Cracker. I really that's the only way I can see that working because when Gear Four is used, Luffy can't fight for ten minutes, and I didn't see anybody else there who could have done it. So, maybe, well, he mentioned running, so maybe Nami just took Luffy and did, and just used Mirage Tempo to, like, you know, uh, keep on to a vague Cracker for 10 minutes, and then Luffy continued to fight Cracker without Gear 4. Or maybe he went back into it once or twice, and Nami would just take him and do the same thing again. He mentioned running, and I don't see Luffy just running. I don't see Luffy of his own free will when he can fight running. I feel like it's more like something. He would go into Gear 4, fight Cracker, be on the ground, not even pick him up, Murad Tempo away, eat Cracker up a bit, feed him, go back into, eat, eat, eat Cracker Warrior, go into Gear 4, do some damage, and repeat. Maybe that's what happened. I can't really think of anything else. But yeah, if I had to rate this chapter, honestly, I think this is what... You know what? I would say this is a 10 out of 10 chapter. Just because we got so much on Sanji's backstory. I would really say that. I try not to get chapter 10 out of 10, but... We, we we kind of... We pretty much finished the Sanji backstory. It was satisfying. It definitely wouldn't go backstory. It'll be better than the anime with, like, the special effects and the sound and the voice acting and, and the music. It'll be probably be... be, 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 be probably be better but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed my review of one piece chapter 841 if you did leave it a like tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below and above all else guys have a great day subscribe for more weekly one piece reviews i'm gonna start trying to get these out earlier again i'm just kind of haven't been getting them out on time and i'm sorry about that but peace out guys have a great day